Hi, I'm Melanie Bunn. I'm a nurse consultant and educator specializing in brains, specifically people living with dementia. And I'm honored to be here with you again through um, the support of Dementia Alliance of North Carolina um, to talk about a condition that happens often early in the disease that is often one of the more frustrating um, conflicting kinds of conditions and it's the idea that the person just won't admit it if she would just admit that she needs help I mean it's very clear to everybody she can't do it by herself she's not safe she is not safe in this house by herself if she would just admit it we could get help in life would be she doesn't have to move but if she doesn't admit it we're not gonna have any choice if she won't admit that she needs help we're gonna be put into doing things we don't want to do if he would just admit I've got the letter from the doctor that says something is wrong but he won't admit that something's wrong they just won't admit it take a deep breath and let it go because there's a name for that now it's not the name that y'all are thinking because some of you I know what that name is he's been stubborn all her his life she's been stubborn all her life she's being stubborn or you know just hard-headed you know she's just always been right she can't admit that she's not perfect she's been perfect all her life he's never wanted to admit when he made a mistake and this is just more of that or even it's the person in denial if they would just move through this stage of grief out of denial they would get it and we could get some services and help it it's not any of those things it's none of those things it's a clinical condition and I'm gonna have to work on this one Agnosognosia. So say it with me. Yeah, say it with me. <laughs> Agnosognosia. That's the last you'll hear of that. Um, but it is a clinical condition. And what it means is the part of the brain, this frontal part of the brain, this part of the brain that is able to help you be logical and reasonable, this part of the brain that's able to help you see other people's perspective, this part of the brain that allows you to truly see yourself as you are in all of your glory and ability and skill and when you need some help, when things aren't the way you want them to be, when you can't do it all on your own, that part of the brain becomes impaired in people living with dementia. And so it's not that they don't want to, it's that they can't do. And I'm gonna ask you just to reflect on that a minute. Say it with me out loud if you want to. It's not that they won't do, it's that they can't do. It's a hard concept to get into your brain because this person that you've been in relationship with, maybe your entire life if it's a parent, maybe it's your adult life if it's a spouse, maybe it's a little bit of your life if you're working with this person um, in a healthcare capacity or in a living environment or if it's somebody who hasn't really been core central to your life, but this is a person who you have a relationship with and now because of dementia, the rules don't work anymore. Now here's the challenge. None of us like to be wrong. And when we're wrong, we don't like to admit it. But for people living with dementia, it's way beyond that. It's not that it's not an emotional thing. It's not a developmental piece of I'm not mature enough to admit when I'm wrong or I'm I'm I have too much um um, self-regard to admit that I'm not perfect. It's really not that. It truly is that people living with dementia don't get it. They don't get that they have a condition. So you can do all of those things that you've done to try to prove it to them. When they say you never call, you can show your phone and say, yes, I've called, you just don't remember. And the person says, no, I remember. And it's not that, it's that loss of insight into ability and skills. So you can't prove it because you can't make that front part of the brain reconnect. You can't make that part of the brain align together again to make the loss make sense. It doesn't work. And if you look at the photograph of this frontal part of the brain, what you'll see is there's gray matter around the outside, which is storage, 
white matter on the inside, which is connection. So if you look at that top brain, it's beautiful. It's so rich. There's so much gray matter. There's so much connection that puts things together and lets it seem my fault, your fault, our fault, other people's perspectives. I need help. If you look at that bottom brain, it really doesn't work anymore. That idea that I can't do it doesn't work. So if I used to be able to do something, my brain tells me I can still do it. If I am a person who is independent and I am a person who has taken care of others, then I can still be independent and I can still take care of others. Now, if you look at that bottom brain, really not so much connection. If you look at that bottom brain, really not so much connection. There's not the gray matter. There's not the white matter. Things aren't working. When we look at that part of the brain from a chemical perspective, still not really working. Because if you look at that bottom picture on the first column, and you see that arc of red across the top, that's that functional frontal lobe. If you look at the second picture on the bottom, which it's not that arc of red anymore. There's a little bit of red, but it's mostly kind of lighter colors and it's just not connecting from that chemical perspective. So that's what's happening, but it's not enough. It's not enough to think about what's happening. What we've also got to think about is, mm, take a deep breath, who can change? So when you go back and look at those brains, we're the ones who are gonna have to change. It's incredibly difficult because dementia is changing the rules. It's incredibly hard to learn new things when you're tired or when you're stressed or when you're emotional. You're either anxious or you're angry or you're grieving. Really hard to learn new patterns, to learn new ways of communicating and adapting. It's going to take support and it's going to take practice. But here's some things to think about, here's some things to try. Let go of needing to be right. Incredibly easy for me to sit here and say this, incredibly hard for me to do it in my own life and for you to do it in your lives. Let go of needing to be right and to insisting that the person living with dementia agree with you and get that you are looking out for their best interest. You do want what's best for them. They don't get that most of the time. They don't get that. Let go of unrealistic expectations that if the doctor explains it, if the judge explains it, if the attorney explains it, if the XYZ explains it, there isn't a way to explain to make that work. So if you let go of those two things, then what do you do? Well, change your focus away from what the person can't do. They can't get it, they can't understand it, they can't admit it, they can't process it. Let go of that and go back and hold on to the things that the person can do. So what the person can do, if they're exp expressing that they don't agree with you, they're still able to communicate their wants and needs. If they're able to do that, then let's embrace that and let's support them in that. They're still able to do pieces of things. Instead of taking the whole thing away, let's find ways to optimize what they are able to contribute. And we do that by not making it an all or nothing kind of, of perspective. Um, we have this, this attitude as care partners that if I don't do it the my way, you know, I'm not, you don't say that. We don't say that. We don't say my way. We say the right way. Um, if, if we aren't going to do it the right way, then why bother? Because the right way is kind of like taking your car and trying to drive it through a mountain. You can do that. You can spend decades doing that. You might get a little wear, but you're probably going to wind up with a head injury and needing a new car. Um, so let's find ways around the mountain. So if the mountain is, he won't admit that he needs help. She won't admit that she's got dementia, that things are changing. Let's find a way around that. And some of the ways around that include changing the way we reach out to help. 
So instead of taking over, finding ways to ask the person, would you help me? I'm working on um, my taxes. Um, if you get yours out, let me see what you've done and we can, I can, I can work on mine from there. Um, so we ask the person for their help. Um, we use gifts. So instead of saying, um, you know, you need to go to this adult day program. I don't get it. I don't want to do that. I don't need that help. I don't need anybody in my house. Um, I got a really good deal. It was buy one, get one free. Um, I've got someone to help me and you get someone to help you. It's a buy one, get one free kind of thing. That can sometimes work. And then you've got to talk the person into making it really a buy one, get one free. Try something like, let's do this together instead of you need help. Let's do this together. Um, making it about helping the children. Let's do this to help the kids. Thinking about things like, this is not about you, this is everyone. So everyone needs to get their Medicare annual wellness visit. Everybody needs to get their baseline cognitive function. Um, I'm not pointing my finger at you saying you need help. This is something that everybody does. So we find that way to kind of make that, those kinds of things. We'll, we'll explore those a little bit more in a, in a future um, video. So take a deep breath, find some ways to remind yourself because in that moment it feels like if she would just pay attention or if he would just concentrate or if he would just get it, she would just get it. Um, so find your ways to remind yourself that it truly is about brain change. It truly is the disease that's creating this situation. So if you're a person who wears bracelets, you know, I, I wear a bracelet um, to remind me of a friend who's um, great niece is recovering from cancer. Um, maybe I wear a bracelet to remind me that my mom or my spouse or my partner or my person living with dementia is doing the best he or she can. Um, and and another piece of it is to let's let's let go of keeping this a secret because the more people who know how to help the more people who know how to respond, the richer the community is going to be. So if people in the peripheral of the person's community are getting frustrated because he doesn't get it, she doesn't get it, if we help begin to help them understand the idea of doing the best he or she can, then we build a richer community for that person living with dementia and it becomes a more inclusive um, community that actually can begin to lift people living with dementia up by accepting them as they are. And lastly, reach out for support because it's hard to be on and it's hard to be on by yourself all the time. So reach out for support from people who get it. So the people who get it might be a support group, the people who get it might be people in your life you've been through this before, who haven't just been through it, but have been successful in kind of getting through it. Reach out to a Dementia Alliance because they have wonderful supports and resources. Reach out so you can get through this with the person living with dementia. So it's not just an idea that they need to get it, it's we need to get this different thing. And this different thing is the way life is now. It's brain change, it's dementia. We need to get it together instead of putting the burden on the person living with dementia to get what we need them to get. If we return, if we reverse that, and think about what do they need us to get? What do they need us to get? And what they need us to get is that they're still real. They're still there. They're different, but they're still valuable. They can still contribute. 
they've still got ability to have options and to have preferences and to have people on their team who don't expect them to change, but are who are willing to make changes to be on this journey with them. So thank you very much for tuning in for this webinar. Thank you very much for being part of um, Dementia Alliance of North Carolina, and I look forward to seeing you in the future.